Just a uh, quick uh, discussion about uh, how to create uh, elevations and reflected ceiling plans using your SketchUp model. Um, and here we are in our space planning model. We have a number of uh, different saved scenes. Uh, hopefully you made it through that lecture. We've got a floor plan um, and we've got some convenience views uh, for while we would, while we would design. Um, and uh, to create a reflected ceiling plan, uh, we do it the same way we created these section views, which is, first of all, make sure that you are in parallel projection. It's very important. Um, and uh, also you want to use one of the saved um, standard views. Uh, I have my standard views toolbar up here. Um, however, I can never remember which one is which. So um, if you're like me and, and you just have uh, no memory, you can use these standard views, top, bottom, front, back, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so to section away the model, we want to be looking up. Now, if you remember, we can use the keyboard arrow keys to force the direction of the section plane. Um, I've just clicked the section plane tool. Now, uh, over the model, if uh, you're lucky, you can hit the up arrow and it will force the section cutting tool to look up. Um, and what I like to do, I like to cut my section plane uh, so that I can see the top of the door and the top of the window. It's known as the head. Uh, I'll just click there. And you see how um, I can see the very top of the door and the window. And this is nice when uh, it comes time to place things like exit signs. Um, or if I just want lighting over the, um, lighting over the door, uh, I can do it that way. Anyway, there we go. I've got all my sections going. Um, I can uh, use one of the standard views. I don't believe that there is a bottom icon here in the standard views uh, toolbar, but there is one up here if you choose bottom. And you see how that is basically a uh, reflected ceiling plan. Um, I'll want to uh, use my style that I have created for um, orthographic views. Let's see which one of those is that. Uh, the orthographic views uh, forces, uh, orthographic view style forces um, the display to be uh, have a white background, which is kind of nice. Uh, anyway, and there we go. We have a lovely uh, reflected ceiling plan. If I had any lighting in there, um, it would show up. Uh, I don't, alas. And um, now uh, let me just uh, go to my scenes manager here. Come on. Um, go to my scenes manager and I'll add in a scene. Uh, and of course, you probably want to label it something that would be helpful. Um, so that you can remember it. Okay, let's make sure that's updated. Now, um, once you have your reflected ceiling plan uh, in there, and obviously uh, any interior elevations that you want, um, these are all uh, sections right now. Um, and uh, longitudinal section, transverse section, they're basically, in SketchUp world, there is no difference between a section and a an interior elevation. It's only when we go to layout that we determine um, if uh, the drawing is going to have wall and floor thickness or not. So I'm going to click the send to layout button. And there is a full lecture later on on um, how to set up a presentation in uh, layout. But uh, let me just take a uh, uh, an arch D uh, size sheet, uh, sheet of paper here and uh, within the layout uh, view, uh, the layout interface, that's where we determine um, if this is going to be an elevation or not. And the easiest thing to do, uh, first of all, in the um, section for the SketchUp model, uh, we select the viewport and go to the SketchUp model um, uh, panel here, close these other ones. Um, we can uh, determine which uh, saved scene we're going to use. Obviously, um, for an interior elevation, we'll use one of the ones that I labeled as a section view. You see how it switches to that. We do, of course, always want to do things to scale when we're dealing with orthographic views. So make sure you choose a scale that makes sense for our project. And half inch seems pretty good. Now, uh, right now, the elevation... Um, is not an elevation, it's a section. Um, so what you'll need to do is use the grips in uh, layout to help you crop away the wall thickness. You see how as I mouse over this edge, I get a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, a grip modify um, uh, indicator for the cursor. 
uh, and I can just chop away the exterior of the model and try to leave uh, some of the interior um, space. Do that, there we go. So that's basically an interior elevation. Now, um, what if I have some irregular boundary? Uh, for example, uh, let me just stretch this out a little bit. Um, what if I wanted to, uh, oh, I don't know, trace the interior of the uh, window frame um, and have my interior elevation follow that profile, which is very common uh, if you have something like casework or uh, millwork up at the top of the um, wall. You might want to trace that outline in your interior elevation. Well, to do that, now you need to um, draw a custom boundary for your um, interior elevation. And uh, the way you do that, um, take your pencil tool in layout, and you can see here it's it's already starting to uh, fill in uh, space. And I'll just trace over the rest of the space. So here's my shape that I just drew. Okay, and uh, here is my viewport. I'm going to select them both at the same time. Right click on them and choose create clipping mask. And what this will do is we'll create an irregular boundary for my interior elevation. You see how that crops it away. And now uh, you might say, well, that's all fine and dandy, but I like a nice heavy line weight uh, for my um, perimeter of my interior elevation. Well, uh, you can come in here, you can change uh, what's known as the stroke value um, for the line that we drew. Um, and it's just a matter of choosing it from the drop-down list. And you can see here that um, by changing the value of the stroke, 10 might be a little bit um, extreme. Let's make it uh, 6. Um, and you can toggle that on and off if you want to see what it looks like. Just click the stroke button. Um, and there you go. There's an interior elevation um, that uh, is using the content of your SketchUp model. And remember to save your layout file, and any updates to your SketchUp model uh, will be updated the next time you open your layout.